Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Morning Marathon. I am Big Chuck, delighted to have you aboard, and uh, it's time now for our monthly visit with Mr. Mark Simonson. He is the City of Oneonta historian. Mark comes by once a month, and uh, we reminisce across the valleys. Hi, Mark. How oh, you doing? Chuck. How's things going? I'm going well. Everything all right with yeah. you? Well, yeah. Well, that's good. That's good. End of January is coming upon us. That's move, uh, yeah. moving right along in here. And uh, as uh, most people know, Mark uh, brings his Wayback Machine, and it's a huge thing. He needs two, oh, yeah. two guys to help bring it in. Bring the old U-Haul in. And yeah. And, uh, and we're going <laughs> to set it. Forklift. And... <laughs> we're going to set it for a... Uh, where are we setting it for this morning? January 1971. January 1971. Lots of us will We're remember this. Let's that see, sounds 45 great. 45 years ago? Yeah, right? let's I was, go. I wasn't a math major, so. <laughs> <laughs> let's go. What do you got for us well, 40, from January of 1971? Yeah, uh, the news on January 7th was yeah. that the Upper Catskill Community Council of the Arts has taken a giant step forward with the publication of its first newsletter. Ta da! <laughs> All the news that's fit to print. The purpose of the newsletter, as explained by Dr. Yeah. Charles Hunt, the president of UCA, is to open up communication lines with the arts in this area. And we have to say that's uh, so because the Upper Catskill Community Council of the Arts, in existence for better than a year now, mm -hmm. has uh, previously done all its communication by personal contacts with existing organizations which work in the arts it's so 1970s no, no such thing as the internet or twitter or what is or personal facebook or i know personal yeah, I contact. speak to each what wow i mean i can't i can't do that with my thumbs here right and text and right <laughs> Wow, what a different world it was back then. So they, they hope to uh, build on that. Um, it's hope the newsletter says that more organizations and their activities will be included in the spring issue of the newsletter due about April 1st. Excellent. Yeah, That's good. So the word of mouth and the newspaper. I wonder what, was the, when, what year was the last one when the internet finally took over? Well, that's a good question. And they said, why are we still doing this newsletter? <laughs> I know. Everybody's gone from paper to uh, online stuff these days. Excellent. Sure. Excellent. Sure. That was early January 71. Yeah. How about this? From Albany, a powerful Republican leader of the state legislature proposed Wednesday to make New York competitive with Nevada and other gambling meccas by establishing gambling casinos across the state. Wow. January 7th of 1971, this appeared in the Daily, uh, the Oneonta Star, as yeah. it was called then. Senate Majority Leader Earl Bridges, unveiling his plan at a news conference, said his objective was to produce sorely needed revenue for the state and its communities. No casinos at, yeah, at that point. Well, he rejected a newsman's suggestion that it might encourage people to gamble away money that they couldn't afford to lose. He said, I'm after the pro, the guy with a lot of money to whom gambling is a form of relaxation, even though the... The newspaper said, uh, uh, "Go the form of relation, a misspell, uh -huh. a whole thing like that. He goes to the Bahamas or Bermuda or Nevada. The Niagara Falls lawmaker generally regarded as the most influential man in the state legislature said he would introduce a proposed amendment to the state constitution to permit casino operations on a local option basis. So here we are, 45 years later. Still and talking some, about casinos. Well, yeah, there's one being built where in Schenectady. Uh -huh. Is that right? And yeah. another Construction's one. Construction's underway there. Bingham, or Owego up in that area. Tioga uh, down, down Tioga, area. out uh, uh, west of uh, Syracuse. Yeah. And also one <clears throat> in um, the Catskills. Four of them. That's right. That's right. I forgot and, about but that. 40 one. years, 45, 45 years 45 ago. 45 years ago. There wasn't any yet. No. So. so it was just being proposed at this point. Yeah. The casinos would uh, offer game, gambling on cards, dice, roulette, and other games, as well as slot machines and book bets on horse races and all kinds of athletic events. So that was before off-track betting came around. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. So this was January of 1971. The move was on. Of course, the 1960s in Oneonta, Delhi, Cobleskill, Morrisville, Lots of dust, lots of dirt and noise and construction. Colleges being oh built. Oh, my gosh, yeah. yeah. I mean, the 1962, I think it was 1,000 people at the campus. By 1970, the projection was hopefully to have about 5,000 students mm -hmm. here in Oneonta. Well, the, the boom was uh, starting to go into a bust at that point. 
Assemblyman Edwin Mason of Hobart. I knew Ed Mason. Has called for a complete halt to all expansion of the state university system until a complete reevaluation is conducted. He was quite the conservative. He yes, said, he was. He said the state has been on a spending binge for several years. The essential fact is taxation is in New York has practically reached the level of legalized extortion. Ed Mesa. It's, it's completely wrong to restrict highway crews charged with the absolutely essential job of plowing and clearing roads while at the same time approving construction of a $5 million athletic building complete with squash courts at Suco. Oh, oh, squash courts. That was the final oh, straw oh for Ed boy, Mason. I'll tell you. Yeah, the pool was okay, but yeah. the squash courts, I've had it. And you got to cut there. He said... The university system has gotten too big too fast. He also blasted the Rockefeller administration for building many ornate, grandiose buildings on campuses. And at that time, there's a picture right next to this article showing a hole in the ground. Yep, and I know this building very well because it's my home away from home. That's where Being you teach. where I teach and even as a historian before yeah. I became a teacher, I spent a lot of time there in the, in the dungeon of... Mill Library yeah. at the microfilm machine for hours on end looking and wearing my eyes out. Looking but, at uh, the old newsletters. Yeah, looking at the old... <laughs> <laughs> and there are stars, only honor wow. stars there. Yeah. So that was... Uh, Ed Mason was calling for a halt. And it was coming true because... Uh, let's see, this is January 12th. Only honor state is beginning to feel the impact of Governor Rockefeller's belt-tightening orders. Dr. Clifford Craver, Clifford Craven, the college's acting professor, said, uh, a president, I'm sorry, said uh, yesterday, the uh, full text was for budget tightening. They're curtailing all travel at college expense. Uh, they've frozen. They're not filling any vacant positions. So they were really taking a, 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 a sharp eye at yeah. what was going on with SUNY at that at yeah. 71. So no more big buildings yeah. like we saw in the 60s. Mm -hmm. And Craven said, uh, while we're grateful to the people of this state for enabling this university to be built so quickly, we should remember New York was the last state to establish a state university. We were way behind in providing higher education opportunities needed. New York is still only 13th among the states per capita in support of higher education, Dr. Craven said. Did you know that we were the last state to get a state university system? I did not know that. I did not know that. I'm, I'm surprised. 48, 49. I, I am surprised. When, uh, yeah, when they they formed the state university in hmm. New York system after World War II. Yeah. When the big boom sure. began. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you who the first was. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Probably say, in the city. I say maybe Massachusetts or something. Oh, oh the yeah. first, yeah, I the don't know. The state university yeah, system. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's Horace Mann, so... Yeah, let's see. 1971. That was uh, that, that uh, one campus. Mm -hmm. Over on the other campus, a little bit of celebrity came to town. This was uh, January 16th. And uh, what black America is doing today is reacting, reacting to your insults. Dick Gregory told a crowd of 2,400 at Hartwick College's physical education building last night. The comedian turned civil rights activist charged that the laws of the land apply differently to blacks than to whites. Hmm. So Dick Gregory came to Oneonta. Big crowd. Yeah, 2,400. Yeah. Let's see. Well, here's an interesting landmark. It's dated January 20th of 1971. It said a Long Island developer has purchased 2.07 acres, a little over two acres, in Oneonta's 6th Ward for construction of a federally funded 113-unit high-rise for the elderly. Nader Towers. Exactly. Oh. Fox Lodge Corporation of Ronkonkoma, say that five times fast, will pay $90,000 for five parcels, including the former Mitchell Street School lot owned by Oneonta attorney Frank Getman. Uh, this deal is closed, a Fox Lodge spokesman said yesterday, except for some last-minute paperwork. So let's How see. How many units at Nader Towers did it say? Um, 113 units, it said there. Uh, I, I don't know if that was the final. I was going to say, that seems a lot. A yeah. lot more than the... I, I, don't, I don't know, but... 
I gee, I'd have to I'd have yeah. to look further into that. I don't. I can't imagine there's that many 113 units in there, but it's possible. Yeah. Let's see. William P. McManus, executive director of Oneida's Housing Authority, said yesterday he is hoping for an April groundbreaking for the high rise, and it did open, I believe, in early. 1973. Yep. Okay. They tore down the Mitchell Street School, which was built, I think, in the early 1920s. Do you remember the Mitchell Street School? I remember of it. Since I was kind of an East End center. Yeah. I was a Center Street kid. Yeah. So that was, you know, isn't where I'd normally hang out. So the the, the, the the Mitchell Street School would have been torn down in 71. Or, Thereabouts. Yeah. Uh, so how long, I wonder how long it sat empty. For years and years and years? Or... <laughs> It probably did, yeah. yeah because I, 1966, school, the Riverside School that's opened in Greater school Plains, I never so that's hear about. it's 50 years old this yeah. year. You got to, yeah. if you can believe it. Yeah. Riverside but and Greater Plains are 50. The Mitchell was the elementary school, Mitchell. Uh, yes, it was. Yeah. I, I, and then there was hear about that a school. sister school was the River Street School where the Oak Square apartments are. I today. gotcha. Okay. And that was torn down, I think, in the early 1970s so there was, as well. Okay, good. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. So they had two elementary schools in the Sixth War because it was so crowded because 1890s and forward, all the railroad sure. families came to town sure. to work on the D&H. Yeah. So they had two schools down there. Yeah. Interesting. And River Street, I think, was built in the mid-1880s because mm. it was around 1890 or thereabouts because that area was growing so much. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So Mitchell Street gone. The start of Nader Towers, January 20th of 1971. 45 years ago. Can mm-hmm. you believe it? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, here's deja vu all over again. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mayor James Lettuce has decided to recommend a dramatic change in Oneida's parking setup. He wants free parking in the Deet Street parking lot and the Brown parking lot at the corner of Main and Market Streets. Who doesn't? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, we've seen go to pay, go back to free, go back to pay, mm-hmm. go back to free. You need motions. You need drama made to follow this darn thing. <laughs> well, anyway, the mayor has said last night he would make the formal recommendation to the Common Council in his February 16th State of the City message. Now, the Brown parking lot. Where is that? No longer. It's a common place called the Clinton Plaza today. This is 1971. Okay. So that old building was still there. Okay. They started tearing these buildings down 1971, 72. Uh, where 125 is today, I think that came down in 71 or 72. Mm-hmm. They built that one first, and then the Clinton Plaza came. That opened in 1975. So the Brown Street parking, or the Brown Park parking lot, was right in that lower okay. area of um, where the plaza is today. The, okay. the shops and the restaurants sure. down in that area. <clears throat> there used to be a city park right there named after Senator Walter Brown, I think his name was. And he lived at 97 really nice house there the uh, red brick yeah 97 like yeah oh. that was what senator walter brown's house okay and he had a park right across the street from him he donated he had the land he donated it and that was one of Oneana's first I'll be downtown darn. parks I, I never knew that uh, they tore that down yeah in the early 70s to make way for the who was he was he oh he was a senator he said state senator yeah is there any commem- brown brown i think it was brown and ward hardware but I was just going to say, is yeah. there any commemoration of a U.S. senator from Oneida? I think he was a state senator. Oh, he was a state yeah, senator? Yeah, just a state senator. Okay, yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. Well, interesting. Just a state senator, yeah, you say. I, but interesting. Yeah. So, yeah. So, uh, let's see. He wants two hours of free parking at each of those major lots. He said the vacant urban renewal agency owned lots on Market Street at the corner of Main and Chestnut and Grove would also remain free for parking. Well, that building was down then, apparently. Uh, where 125 is today, the old Stanton Opera House. Mm-hmm. That got torn down around 70, 71. I'd like to have gotten nice inside building. that building. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I wonder what that was like. Way up in the... Uh, they, no such thing as um, um, handicap legislation back then. They put the Opera House up on the third floor, the top floor, the wow. auditorium. No elevator. So you had to climb, yeah, no, yeah, you had to climb mm-hmm. the stairs. So, yeah, they didn't think that way back in the... Uh, 1800s when they built that uh, Stanton Opera House. But that Yeah, that came down around that time period. So, let's see. What else was going on in 1971? Ah, yes. Quiet, soft-spoken Ed Pushkar. The iron disciplinarian from the Velvet Approach 
has coached his last Oneonta High School football team. You know who his assistant coach was? Joe Kim. The grand old man of radio. Is yes, right? he was. Uh-huh. He was his assistant coach. And uh, Ed Pushkar, was, uh, he announced his resignation in January of 1971 after six years as head man of the Yellow Jacket Gridiron teams was formally announced at last night's meeting of the Oneonta Consolidated School District Board of Education. So uh, I can't remember who his uh, successor was. I don't think they named him at that time, but mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. yeah. But that was that was big. He had he had done quite well with the football program since he took over for Lloyd Baker. Sure. In um well, mid sixties. He was yeah, he was the first he was the coach when they played the first game up at what is now Lloyd Baker Field. Is that right? At the East End. Mm-hmm. And, uh, East Street. East Street, I should yeah. say. Yeah. Yeah. So that was that was big news. I remember this. This is kind of a national story. But I'd be watching Saturday morning cartoons. You know, we'd watch the Road Runner falling off the cliff, sure. and you know, uh-huh. Popeye beating up Ludo uh-huh. and violence and all this stuff. Well, NBC TV makes a notable change in its programming schedule this morning with the debut of Pop Ups, minute-long education films designed to teach reading skills to preschoolers. I, I educational have no programs. Idea. I've never heard of that. The short film clips, the beginning of what the network promises to be a series, will be aired in place of one-minute paid advertisements normally seen between 8 a.m. and 1 p.m. Do you remember these? I do. Uh, really? I rem- Yeah, they, they got fancier in the as 71 to 75. Um, and you'd be sitting there waiting for Roy Rogers or whatever, and all of a sudden, boop, up the... And today, we're learning about yeah. condensation. That's right. Wow. Yeah. What a bummer. Like Sesame Street, the pop-ups will follow a relatively new concept in education, that is, when learning to read and speak, the child is his own best teacher, so NBC felt. Hmm. It replaced those commercials for sugar-frosted sugar bombs. With the how, <laughs> how, how to, yeah, how to, <laughs> grow, how to grow a vegetable. The greatest new toys wow. or something. This, this replaced it. To get an idea on how the series will be received and the results it could obtain, NBC affiliates in New York City and Cleveland aired the short films in August of 1970 as a trial, the results evidently pleased NBC. So the films are based on the words... What did they ask the kids? Probably not. (laughs) Probably not. The films are based on the words and color system used to teach reading in schools throughout the world. I can't imagine. Yeah. What an intrusion into your Saturday morning cartoon watching. Tell you. Learning. Meet me, (laughs) but... Yeah. (laughs) Bring back the Roadrunner. (laughs) Yeah, more violence. Poof. Yeah, right. <laughs> January 23rd of 1971 was the, the debut of pop-ups. Hmm. So let's see. Oh, we're going back to SUNY here for a minute. The Board of Trustees of the State University of New York's um, on Wednesday approved tuition fee increases for all levels of study at 32 operated campuses in the system. So they were cutting back, so they... Put on the backs of the students and raise the tuition and fees. Mm-hmm. Beginning in September, this is 1971, tuition for New York undergraduate residents will jump from, you ready for this, $400 a year to 550 Out-of-state undergraduates will pay $900 instead of $800. Oh, my gosh. In-state graduate student fees will increase from 600 to 800 and out-of-state graduate tuition will rise from... Eight hundred to one thousand dollars. But the first one was the first figures you mentioned were what? The four and five hundred dollar ones for what? What were for four hundred a year to five hundred fifty for, for what? Uh, for undergraduates. I think I paid that much for one of Abby's books this year. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> I think so. I believe it. <laughs> I believe it. Meanwhile, okay, this was January eighteenth. Uh, January 28th, 1971. Here we go. January 30th of 1971. Cost to average New York State residents attending Oneonta State next year will be in the vicinity of $2,270. Still going up. Students faced fixed expenses of about seventeen eighty-eight, assuming no fees are raised on top of the tuition hike announced earlier this week. On top of this... Students face individual expenses, such as clothing, entertainment, 
of between 245 and 725 college officials say. Mm -hmm. So on my computer at home, I use this all the time for doing my columns and looking at how much things cost back then and what they cost. $2,270 in 1971. In 2015 dollars would be Mm $13,431. So there you go. There you go. And your Suco costs aren't peanuts, the, uh, the headline said on January 30th of 1971. Oh, Education. Yeah. Who needs it? Yeah. Yeah, it's over. Be a radio DJ instead. <laughs> <laughs> Mamas, don't let your babies grow up to be DJs. That's <laughs> a country music <clears throat> song that said. Here we go. Gosh, this was 1971. Assemblyman Donald J. Mitchell of Herkimer. He represented her area, kind of like um, Bill McGee does today, uh-huh. whose district includes Otsego County, was one of a kind on the floor of the legislature on Wednesday. Although a great majority of his colleagues joined him in voting for more money on Albany's South Mall complex. Oh, this is the Rockefeller complex. Mitchell, majority whip of the assembly, was the only assemblyman to praise the mall concept despite its skyrocketing costs. When the mall is completed, Mitchell said, we will have the greatest complex of state buildings in the country. Mm -hmm. Uh, True. I'm proud of the fact that New York is the empire state and we should have the finest, he said said the South Mall project, which, when completed, will house state government, was originally estimated to cost about $400 million. Since then, the cost has doubled, and many legislature, uh, legislators believe the expense will top the $1 billion mark before it is completed. No doubt. I'll, I'll, be, I'll bet <laughs> they were glad if they could have kept it at a billion. But. Yeah. So he let's see, this is Mitchell. He said, after listening to a variety of assemblymen call the mall names from Rockefeller's erector set to New York State's own Vietnam, oh. Mitchell <laughs> took the floor to defend the beauty of the mall and urged the stream of criticism to be ended. The mall has been mauled enough, he said. M A U L E D. Sure. Bring yeah. it on. <laughs> let, the, let the back hose begin. <laughs> <laughs> you watch that place. I did. He built when you were I, in uh, Albany Business College. Well, I right? went and I went to college uh, Albany uh, in '67, '8, and '9, and it was, of course, that at that time it was a neighborhood. Yes. It was a mostly Italian neighborhood, poor neighborhood, but a colorful neighborhood. Restaurants, grocery stores, bars, and very, not, I, I went there, and then it's then the word started. You know that the churches were going to close. I forget how many churches. That place was loaded with churches, like 11 churches were wow. torn down or something. And businesses were offered money and residents started moving out. And then uh, 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 up it went. And uh, I, you know what? I I will agree with Earl Bridges or, or whoever this guy is. Who was this guy? Oh, Donald, this was Mitchell. Donald, Donald Mitchell. I love the uh, Empire Plaza. I don't know if everybody does, but uh, I think it makes Albany have, I think, one of the most unique skylines in America oh, sure. because you have the old, uh, you know, Dutch influence, French Romanesque buildings of the old capital and like that, right next to Star Wars. You yeah, know, the, the egg, <laughs> yeah. the egg is an upside down building there. Yeah. The Corning Tower, the is four the, towers. Uh, the Corning Tower is the tallest building in New York State outside of New York, and I believe. It is the tallest building between Boston and Chicago. It's got a great view, that's for sure. You yeah, go up to the yeah, viewing free, towers free up there. Free observation tower up yeah. there. Yeah. So, yeah. I like it. I yeah. like it. It's impressive. Uh, you come in not by the throughway I-90, but that connector that comes from Nassau and um, oh, Austerlitz, that area. Yeah. You get yeah. on the bypass and comes right into Albany. Sure. Coming along, going uh, westbound. That's an impressive sight over very to your impressive left-hand sight. side as yes, you're driving along there on Especially I- at night. If you're yes. going to Amtrak, that's a good, okay. you know, yeah. there's another yeah. good shot yep. over, over there, yeah. Yeah. So. Good. That was... Uh, Let the bulldozers begin. <clears throat> that's right. Mall has been mauled by Gally. Here's another yeah. eyebrow razor. This wasn't locally, but it... I'm sure it was talked about in the bars and the coffee shops and restaurants here in Oneonta. <laughs> January 30th of 1971. It was a cause that was bound to gain momentum. And it has. Across the country, a group of oppressed people has begun to pro- proclaim its rights vigorously and vociferously. The cause is known as men's lib. What's that? <laughs> 
It's no joke. Men's lib has become a real cause, and it's gaining some real victories. Men from coast to coast say that they are being discriminated against by employers and others, and the discrimination is illegal under the new laws that bar discrimination based on sex. The law, of course, was designed to give women equal um, uh, treatment, I should say, but the men say that they're the ones who need the protection. I, I... I would suggest I don't know, but I would suggest that this didn't let the women, the men's liber. I mean, no. I I certainly didn't march. Uh, did you in I the streets for men's lib? I did not. I was in junior high school. I think that <laughs> any guy that thought about well, some of my classmates, you know, <laughs> I think any guy who thought about marching for men's lib, when they went home and told their wives what they did, they never did it again. Yeah. <laughs> Robert H. Burns is quoted here. He says, it's about time we men got our rights. He said, fairness is fairness all around. Men can, can't can be a doormat. Mr. Burns is a lawyer who represents a young man who wants to be a steward with Pan American World Airways. Oh, boy, there you Pan go. Pan Am says the passengers prefer, uh, prefer pretty girls and it won't hire young men. So that's what he was fighting for. Robert Burns, mm-hmm. the legal voice of men's lib. He's single. (laughs) He is. He's got to (laughs) be. Probably making a good, uh, good chunk of change doing this cause, you know. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. And here we go, January thirteenth of nineteen seventy-one. You pull into place like Vicks or any other station around here. Does your car belch black smoke? Do you feel guilty when it does in light of the scare headlines and in-depth TV documentaries that tell us that man has fouled his nest? Well, the gasoline companies, villains of the ecology-conscious people think they may be able to clean our air. (gasps) At least that's what their super sales pitch promotions are. Buy lead-free gasoline. It made its debut here in 1971, and here's Oneonta Motorists have a choice of lead-free. One of the first places was, uh, had it here, uh, Tenant's Gas Station. Where was that? Tenant's Gas Station. Mike Tenant, manager of Main Street Gulf. I don't know where that is. Mm. I'd have to look that up. He might be listening right now. Yeah. But there it is. Unleaded gas. So makes its that's debut. Some of the big stories in Excellent. news. Yeah. Well, we got about seven minutes left for our oh. favorite, uh, our favorite uh, little section here. So I'll speak slowly, <laughs> or we can no. we can go off on tangents. No, we you never got? do that. I, I we, like this. Yeah. This is uh, entertainment. Where were we going? What were we doing? Where to go? In the entertainment page of Saturday, January 23rd, All righty, here it comes. Here we go. Evening in, in Oneonta's Far East End, over towards uh, the Colliersville area. It's yep. the Andre's Barbecue these yep. days. Mm-hmm. Dancing on Saturday, 9 p.m. to 1 a.m. with music by Wanda and Nita and the Country Gentleman. Route 7, Colliersville. Wanda and Nita and the Country Gentleman. Yep. I would love to have seen them for one night. It yeah. just sounds like such a great rural country group. Wanda and Nita and the Country Gentleman. Excellent. Probably singing Carpenter's songs in 1971. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. 1971. Excellent in dining and then some. Make your reservations now for super dining at the Oasis. Currently appearing nightly is the United Sound Investment. That's the Motor Inn restaurant at 336 Chestnut Street. Boy, I can bring that place back in an instant. That was a favorite of mine. Back in the day, in 71, yeah. yeah. Larry Santos. He was a Larry Santos. They brought in some really nice West Coast uh, bands. Uh, Jack Stahl's piano was up over the bar, I believe. Uh, they had whisk pride cheese and crackers on the bar. <laughs> I remember that in the in the brown ceramic crock. Uh, yeah, it was a it was a cool spot. It was yeah. a cool spot. Yeah. Hey, how about this Molinaries when it was on South Main Street? Mm-hmm. Something new has been added: dancing every Saturday night from 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. Not just pizza anymore. Music by the new Molinaries Quartet. Doesn't say who the force are, but I bet Albert Cologne played in that. Ooh. I am just, I'm, I'd place a, a bet on that. 
being that the casino the Molinary Quartet. Quartet. That sounds Playing fun. your favorite dance tunes from, oh, here I stand corrected, from the big band era. But, you know, hey. You never know. I, that That's great. Contact Mark if anybody knows yeah. who was in Molinari's Quartet. I think it's Albert Cullen. I think, <laughs> I think he's in it. I really do. Anyway, for the younger generation, yeah. the Ponderosa. This is at uh, 105 Main Street where the Salvation Army is today. There was a skating rink in yes, there. Yes, there one was. Time too. The Ponderosa, Friday and Saturday night, featured the band Smoke. Wednesday night, there was a beer bonanza. All right, here we go. Tuesday night, January 26th, a group called the seven and uh, that's basically what they advertised as oh we always like this one here we go here we go dancing every saturday night at the manaho room it in skinevis the manaho room in skinevis largest dance floor in the area music by the western airs of the bell hotel on race street in skinevis awesome our favorite place uh, manaho room our co-sponsor <laughs> uh, our all-time great co-sponsor <laughs> yeah right let's see the scotch mist inn of stanford yeah to entertain you nightly 9 p.m to 2 30 a.m moss it's hard smoke rock over group. here yeah. moss over there yeah yeah let's see no cover no minimum the chateau in stanford oh new competition here competition the chateau Oh, you better hurry up. Your last night for Jean McMillan. She's a folk singer and guitarist. Held over the coincidentals featuring Kathy and her songs. Mm -hmm. And let's see, starting Monday, January 25th. This is 1971 for your listening and dancing enjoyment. Tino and the Revlons. Where? Uh, this was called the Chateau on Tino Route 10. Tino and the Revlons. On, on the odd, they were Tino and the Revlons on Monday and Wednesday, but Thursday they were the <laughs> Molinary Quartet. <laughs> <laughs> and I think Saturday they were Wanda and Nita and the Country Gentleman. They did it all. They just played. They were an all-purpose. Had a gig every night. Yeah. Just a different name. Quickly into the movies, movies, Mark. The what do you movies. got for us? Let's oh. see. What was playing? Cooperstown. The Bird with the Crystal Plumage uh, at the Showcase Cinema. That was about a year old at that time. Walt Disney's Fantasia. That was an old movie, but they brought it back. Let's see, at the Oneonta Theater, winner of four Academy Awards, Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, coming up, The Prime of Miss Jean Brody, starring Maggie Smith. And let's see, another one coming up was uh, Cougar Country in color, Wild Animals, sparking, Sparkling Streams, Breathtaking Scenery, I think it's for the younger people, a true wildlife adventure story. And coming to the showcase, after Fantasia, ah, Peter Fonda and Dennis Hopper. Easy Rider. Easy Rider. That was Rider. new in 1971. Anything, anything from, uh, is there a Sydney theater in there? Oh, 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 oh. Maybe not. Ooh, Maybe oh. not. Uh, no. Oh, here we go. Uh, oh, here we go. Sydney theater. The Diary of a Mad Housewife. That was, I think that was new in 1971. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. That's all good stuff. Thank you so much, Mark. Sweet I appreciate it. Anything else going on in your world you want to share with us? Well, back to teaching at SUNY Oneonta. Yep. And before you know it, I'll probably be back at uh, the Farmer's Museum in Cooperstown. Excellent. Yeah. The 10th season. Warm weather right around the corner. Thanks, Mark. Mark comes by uh, once a month. He is the City of Oneonta historian, and we always enjoy his show. Let me hit you with a weather forecast. Mostly cloudy with a high 32. Cloudy and down to 24 over. Overnight, and for Tuesday, mostly cloudy with a chance of freezing rain in the morning and then all rain tomorrow. But tomorrow's high should be a little bit warmer. Tomorrow we're heading for about 40 degrees. I am Big Chuck. Thank you so much for tagging along. I do appreciate it, especially, of course, all you longtime marathoners who joined me way, way back at 6 a.m. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day. We'll do it all over again on the a.m., in the a.m. In the meantime, I gotta hunt me down a meatball with my name on it. Bye-bye, everybody.